I hope you like my face, because you're about to see a whole lot of it. Hi everybody, welcome to my very first episode of a new video series I'm doing. It's called Grub and Gab, where I show you how to make something delicious and pretty quick, and then I'm going to gab about various topics while eating the delicious thing that I made, because why not? Uh, so for the very first episode, I'm going to show you how to make FML brownies, and we're going to talk about box mixes. First of all, FML brownies, FML stands for fuck my life, or fudge my life in this case. Things haven't been going super awesome, and um, I've just been feeling kind of, I don't know, stuck recently. So these brownies definitely cheer me up, and I'm not saying you should eat your feelings, but chocolate and sugar definitely doesn't hurt anything. So first, I'm going to show you how to make these brownies, and then I'm going to get eating, and we're going to talk. You want to start by melting half a cup of unsalted butter in a saucepan over low heat. Once it's melted, you want to add one cup of white sugar and mix well. There's going to be some melted butter left on top and some of the sugar is going to melt and that's okay. That's exactly what you want. Just mix it as well as you can, then set aside and let cool. In a separate bowl, you want to crack two large eggs into it. Now these aren't room temperature eggs, but they have been sitting out for about 10 minutes or so. To the eggs, you want to add a heaping half cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon instant coffee granules, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now here's my secret for brownies. It's fudge sauce. If you don't have fudge sauce, you can feel free to use chocolate syrup. I use about a third of a cup of the fudge sauce. If you're going to use chocolate syrup, use about a quarter cup. You want to add that to the bowl with the egg mixture and whisk well until it's well combined and fairly smooth. You're not going to be able to get all the lumps out of the cocoa powder, but do your best. Once it's well combined, add the melted butter and sugar to the mixture. And then whisk together until it's well combined. Now next, you're going to add 3 quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. If you're looking to make this gluten-free, you can use almond flour or any other baking mix flour that is gluten-free. And once the flour is in, you want to whisk it together until it's just combined. You want to make sure you don't overwork the brownie batter. And here's another thing that makes my chocolate brownies more decadent. They're mini peanut butter cups. You want to add two handfuls to that. If you don't have those, you can add any other candy pieces. Though really, if you don't have mini peanut butter cups in your life, you're really missing out. And you want to fold that into the batter. Next, you want to prep your 9x9 baking dish. I just used plain cooking spray. If you want to use butter and cocoa powder or butter and flour, by all means, go ahead. Once your pan is prepped, spread in the batter. Make sure you scrape up all the little bits off the bowl to put it in to bake. And you want to smooth it out into a nice even layer. Make sure the batter gets into all the corners. Okay, remember those mini peanut butter cups from earlier? They're back again because we're going to sprinkle more on top. And again, if you don't have these, what are you doing with your life? No, I'm just kidding. Get whatever candy you have available and sprinkle that on top. And finally, on top of all of this, you want to sprinkle some nice chunky fleur de sel, chunky sea salt, to put on top of the batter so it makes a nice salty contrast to the sweetness of the brownie. We're going to bake this in the oven at 350 degrees on the middle rack. And once it's in, you want to set the timer for 30 minutes. This produces a nice fudgy brownie. If you want your brownie more done, feel free to add five more minutes. And that's it. Once it's done baking, you want to make sure you cool it in the pan for at least 10 minutes to 20 minutes before you cut into it and serve it. If you missed any of the measurements, don't worry. You can get a written copy of this recipe on my website, pixienoms.com. Alright, so that's how you make FML brownies, and here I have my slice in front of me. Um, 
But you know what makes this even better? A scoop of vanilla ice cream because why the hell not? And there was a vanilla ice cream on sale at the store. <laughs> so I got some and I should probably eat it. Big scoop. <laughs> Ta-da! There you go. Ice cream and FML brownies. Ice cream, the pixie shoulder shimmy. Yeah. All right, I got my fork. We got the brownie with the ice cream. So let's dig in. Okay, and this is the part where you get to see me make a weird face because I cannot, for the life of me, chew ice cream. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yep. Still can't do ice cream even if it's for camera. So I highly suggest that you go ahead and make this recipe when you're feeling down or you want to cheer someone up because it'll make them happy. <laughs> There's that face again because it's cold. Today I wanted to talk about box mixes because people seem to have like really strong opinions about using box mix for baking. Um, I know a lot of people say, oh, you must hate box mix because you know how to bake everything from scratch. And technically I don't hate them. I grew up on them. Uh, my mom and dad weren't super fantastic bakers. And so most of the desserts that we had were either store-bought or my mom and dad made them from like, you know, Betty Crocker box mixes. Birthday cakes were like that if we didn't order it from a bakery. Um, brownies. The only thing that we really didn't do for mixes were uh, Toll House chocolate chip cookies from Nestle. And that was for Christmas. And that was because we were following the recipe on the back of the chocolate chip bag. So I grew up eating from box mix cakes and cookies and brownies and everything. So I don't super hate them, but at the same time, I very, very rarely use them. Now I say very rarely because every once in a while I'll be at the grocery store and there is a box mix and it looks kind of interesting and I would like to try it out and see how it is. Taking a pause for a brownie bite. I'm gonna shut up and chew for a little bit so I can get a brownie bite. Oh. Mm. I really like the salt on it because it cuts down on the sweetness and the richness. And if you don't salt your desserts, I highly recommend that you do. Because it's pretty good. Okay. Back to talking about box mixes. Basically, if box mixes are all that you're comfortable with and using when you go into the kitchen to bake something, then by all means use it. I mean, don't let someone diss you or talk down to you just because you use box mixes. I mean, that's all some people are able, able. <laughs> Basically what I'm saying is don't let anyone diss you if you use box mixes because, you know, hey, that's okay. I mean, they're there at the supermarkets for a reason. They're fast, they're convenient, and they're pretty easy. But at the same time, I also wanna encourage people to like get into the kitchen and play around with recipes from scratch and make things from scratch because that is also fun and delicious. The main thing is that if you're baking, and no matter how you get to the final product, you're still taking time to make something to either give to someone or share with someone. And that is a way of showing love, right? I mean, that's the way I show love is by feeding someone. I mean, if they have a full stomach, they're cared for and I care for them and whatever. I'm just rambling now. <laughs> Pixie positivity, go! Stop talking time and eating more brownie time. Because my ice cream is melting. Because I was talking too much. If box mixes are your comfort zone for baking, then by all means, go ahead and use box mixes. <coughs> Welcome to the clumsy life of Pixie. <laughs> if you like box mixes, good on you. Don't let anyone diss you for using box mixes. If you don't like box mixes, also good on you. But don't make fun of people who do use box mixes because, you know, maybe that's all they're comfortable with using. 
that's all my mom and dad use if they want to bake a cake or brownie and I'm not going to make fun of them for that. I just might gloat a little bit because I'm way better at baking than they are. It doesn't matter to me if you use a box mix or if you bake something from scratch because in the end you're making a delicious product that you're sharing with someone and that's a way to show love. Gotta finish the brownie, gotta finish the brownie. I probably made a piece that was too big, but I'm not a quitter. Last bite, last bite, last bite, down the hatch. Here we go, last one. Ta-da! And that's it! Thank you so much for watching my first episode ever of Grub and Gab with Pixie. It is now time to clean up and do the dishes. Until next time.